the history and best practices of interactive whiteboards, what went wrong and what went right, links group, Amy, Shannon, Michael, and Aaron. Brief history, whiteboards connected to LCD panels, which work as a display for the computer screen. Smart Technologies founded in 1987. Smartboard first introduced to the global market in 1991. Brief history continued. Early models were front projected. New models have recording software to play audio and video files. Initial purpose and intent. Smartboard interactive whiteboards are a fun and engaging way for students to interact with technology in the classroom. The interactive whiteboards, IWBs, are becoming the classroom technology of tomorrow. They can serve many purposes during everyday instruction as opposed to using a chalkboard or whiteboard. Herman S. Initial purpose and intent continued. Engaging for students allows for self-paced practice, creates a low-threat, high-interest learning environment, teachers can access pre-planned lessons, this can save on student work, promotes group interactivity, and is a cost saver. User demographics. More than 3 million smart boards have been installed in education, business, and government settings since 1991. Over 2.8 million have been installed in K-12 classrooms. Advantages. User-friendly. Teachers can compose easily. Easily collected supporting resources. Learners internalize input easier and provides instant feedback. Disadvantages. More expensive. They can cost from five to seven thousand dollars. They're costly to repair or replace. When students trip on cords, screens can be damaged, permanent markers can be mistaken for the correct tool, and screens can be smashed when they fall down. Frequent calibration can be required, from walking across a classroom to tripping over cables. Visibility can be a problem due to student height or location, and they're not very mobile. Case study. Aaron was a teacher for 10 years in Title I school districts. Challenges his schools faced during their IWB implementation the district could only afford to provide one IWB per grade level. Teachers needed to provide their own lessons and they didn't appreciate not having easily accessible software that was already developed. Not enough support was available during their IWB lessons and there was fear of lack of support or only partial implementation due to costs what went wrong and what went right. These are findings from a study looking at qualitative and quantitative data of 20 teachers at an elementary school using IWBs. Study results, 69% reported technical problems, 33% needed more tech support, Another 33% wanted ready-to-use lessons available. 29% used their IWBs for what a traditional blackboard or whiteboard could have been used for. 26% said they were too time-consuming and 6% said they would need to use them more frequently to be successful. The future. The introduction of mobile devices has significantly decreased the amount of IWBs being placed in classrooms today. The future of technology in the classroom is mobility. Conclusion. 
More research needs to be done to determine the associated academic outcomes using IWBs. Stronger evidence needs to be determined if there really is an increased student motivation. Training needed to use it effectively and the best use of this tool. The educational system may have jumped on the bandwagon before this great tool was fully researched. Thank you for your time. We hope you enjoyed this presentation.